the dark side of the twin flame journey, but nobody talks about and no one's going to tell you. I'm here to tell you that no, you're not going crazy. No, you are not just obsessed. No, <laughs> you are not losing your mind, even though I know that's what you feel like is going on right now. So you meet this person and it's magical, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, it's everything out of this world that you could ever want in a person and you connect and you click and you spend so much time together and it feels so comfortable, it feels like home and then they're gone. <laughs> Welcome to the Twin Flame Journey. My name is Christina Marie and this is my channel, The Chrysalis Creations. Um, Everyone always talks about the the beauty in a twin flame journey, the stages you go through before a union, um, the signs, the symptoms, the <laughs> but nobody ever talks about the pain, the sadness, the loneliness, the non fairy tale version um, that everyone seems to think that it is and that this should be, because it is not a fairy tale, <laughs> and. There is a happily ever after, but it is only perceived the way you perceive it. You have to change the perception in your mind and change the thinking of what you view your twin as and what this connection really is and what it really means and the fact that you two are the same energy. And no matter where you go, no matter what you do, <laughs> once you meet your twin, you're stuck. There, there's no getting over that. Those eyes are burned in your brain for the rest of your life and there ain't nothing you can do about it. You can run, but they'll find you. And that's how it works. It doesn't matter if you're the runner or if you're the chaser or if you're both because sometimes it'll go back and forth. And my journey, mine ran and I got mad because <laughs> I was chasing and I ran away too. And the first time it was a year, the second time it was three, and then it was seven always in the back because they're your twin <laughs> you know a twin relationship is not designed to be all happy-go-lucky you know your twins job in essence is to break you plain and simple nobody says that because you know it's the truth their job is to show you you and you just shatter. They're your mirror. <laughs> they will show you everything you don't want to see. And usually that is how the runner and the chaser develop because there is so much within each other that needs to be healed, it needs to be fixed, it needs to be recognized, it needs to be released. And they don't want to deal with it. It's just, it's too much. You're bringing too much out of each other to really take in what is going on and you guys are lucky for y'all just meeting your twins or you know um just for the simple fact when when I met mine it was almost 20 years ago and it was before the age of technology so I couldn't just <sighs> I couldn't just, you know, get on Google and type in, hey, what is going on with me? I think I'm just crazily assessed, maybe losing my mind, you know. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. You know, the term twin flame wasn't even in my vocabulary. I just, I thought I was crazy for the longest time. I thought I was obsessive, controlling, crazy. Because all I could think about and all I could see was my twin. It, it didn't matter. Uh, that's all I cared about. And, <laughs> and it's a very sad and painful journey because they will bring out the best in you. But as I said before, they're your mirrors. So they also bring out the very, very worst in you. And you will act out very irrationally. You will think very illogical. This, this isn't a rational, logical relationship. Those are all 3D terms. This isn't a boyfriend-girlfriend dynamic. That's 3D termination. This isn't a husband-wife dynamic. No, that is all 3D thinking. This is something deeper. This is something 
that is very beautiful, but just like the onion that they can pair the twin flame journey to, there are a lot of layers to get to that inner core. And just like with an onion, each time that you cut off a layer, it's very painful. It'll make you cry. And <sighs> there's no way to make it easier. There's no way to make it better. And if you're me, I was very stubborn and <laughs> I made my journey a whole lot harder than it had to be. And I'm sure that there are a lot of twins out there who do the same because I tried to rationalize it. I tried to understand it. I tried to chase after it as hard as I could because nothing had ever made me feel so complete. Nothing had ever made me feel so whole. Nothing, nothing had ever made me feel so wonderful, yet in the same terms, nothing had ever made me feel so miserable too. And nothing, I have never cried over anyone except for my twin. I have never, you know, really even had a problem as far as relationships go, I've always been in long-term relationships. I was in one when I met my twin. But I couldn't understand why my twin didn't want to be with me. And my 3D mind rationalized that even though you can look in their eyes and, and tell that they feel the same way you do, you can tell when they hug you, they can tell when they kiss you, that they feel the same way you do, yet they act so different. And it is so frustrating, and that is what makes it so painful. It is that ego that gets in the way. It is that rationality. It is that 3D thinking that is painful. Not really the love. <laughs> Sex with your twin. Everyone tells you how amazing it is because your chakras align and your kundalini rises and their energy is just so intoxicating you can feel it from across the room you can feel it from across the state once you once you connect with them on a deeper level because you can speak to them telepathically you are very connected once you start to awaken and once you start to cut into those layers of yourself and release which doesn't serve you yeah you can get high off of their energy and not even talk to them at all. <laughs> but your twin will penetrate you on a soul level like nobody else ever can. And they don't even have to physically touch you, <laughs> which, which is beautiful and it's amazing. But when you're the chaser and they're running away and in your mind rejecting you, then what? <laughs> you're stuck questioning everything trying to rationalize it trying to justify it by logic and it's deeper than that it's deeper than anything and you try to talk to someone about it your friends your family but nobody gets it they all just say you know that's just another person using you for this and using you for that and oh you know forget them move on so you believe it and you do but you never find that connection with nobody else and you never will even if you find a soulmate, you will never be fulfilled <laughs> the way your twin fulfills you. You. It is a heartache that is unexplainable. It is so devastating. It is like you are having a heart attack, like your heart is being crushed and <laughs> ripped out of your chest. You can't breathe. It's like someone is ripping into your solar plexus and you you get mad you what what else can you do you you try to analyze it you lash out you beyond this spiral out of control and you're so wounded you run away you shut down you run away i mean that's what normal people that's what 3D thinkers do. They shut down and they run away. Well, you don't want me, so I'm just going to go. And that's not how it has to be. 
but it is because each time that you do that, you are forced to look inside of yourself and think, okay, well, what went wrong? And my first separation was the hardest because I didn't realize what was going on and I didn't understand it. And I didn't even think of him as anything special like that. I just thought that um, he wasn't gonna come back. And that was, that was a year. And <laughs> second time, same thing. I didn't think he was gonna come back. You know, I didn't think he was gonna remember me. But he did. And third time, same thing. Seven years, yeah. <laughs> Only a twin would do that. And you really have to learn to grow. You have to find beauty in the darkness.